All right, I just slayed it. Take one. Flying connects people around the world, sometimes for fun and sometimes for business. Global air traffic data for passengers carried shows growth of over 260% over the past 20 years. Now, 2021 was the worst year on record for the airline industry. But hey, that was for a different reason. A new report shows air travel may be slowing down. A lot of people are canceling flights. We are clearly seeing the plateau in demand. And in the long term, it'll probably just be a bump in the road. Air traffic is returning to pre-COVID levels and is expected to grow at a compound annual growth rate of 4% for the foreseeable future. So here's the problem. Air travel accounts for about 2% of global carbon dioxide emissions and remains one of the hardest industries to decarbonize. But new technologies like sustainable aviation fuel and carbon capture could spell a green future for the aviation industry. This is a really cool story, so let's take a look. 569er cleared for takeoff. Air travel is on the rise. The most difficult transport sector to decarbonize. Climate change is our single greatest security threat. Zero emissions aviation is definitely going to be a long haul journey. And we need to take care of it. So for the number of individual aircraft, general aviation makes up the vast majority, with military and commercial sharing a similar piece of the pie. But when it comes to the largest carbon emitters by sector, we actually see the inverse. So why does commercial flight have an outsized carbon footprint? Well, let's start thinking about the size of the problem. If it were a country, I think it would be the sixth largest emitter globally. When you think about the emissions that come from it, it's dominated by long haul international travel. The sector is considered one of the hard to evade sectors of the economy. So alongside of, of other sectors like shipping and steel production or aluminum and chemicals, um, generally the theme is that you can't just electrify your way out of this problem. But companies across the industry from cargo and commercial airlines to fuel producers are looking at ways to mitigate the emissions and transition towards a carbon neutral future. Southwest Airlines purpose is to connect people to what's important in their lives. We strive to implement this purpose as efficiently and sustainably as possible. Hi, I'm Ed Bastian, the CEO of Delta Airlines. Airlines must reduce and ultimately eliminate the impact of greenhouse gases within our sector. The good news? is that the industry is taking collective action. Well, we like to take a holistic view of sustainability, not just in the world of fuel, which is my area, but in everything that we do. We Thanks to our Fuel Sense program, we actually achieved a 27% reduction, even as we increased our fleet size. We believe it's the most efficient aircraft that's in the skies today, using new science and new technology that allows us to fulfill our obligations to the environment. I agree setting ambitious goals is the right thing for airlines to do, but there's also a skeptic in me that has to wonder, how much of that is just posing for PR? The climate goals for aviation are getting more concrete and more specific over time. What's changed now is that individual airlines are setting goals and they're, they're getting more time specific and more technology specific. So in 2018, United Airlines set the goal to go carbon neutral by 2050. Now this is a big deal because the airline industry is super dependent on fossil fuels. So to learn more, we sat down with Lauren Riley. Even just two years ago, discussions around climate and sustainability and environmental ambition were somewhat in isolation of the business. You can't ignore it. You in fact have to more than anticipate you need to engage in the solutions now, which is exactly what's happening in aviation. We don't have uh, a foolproof solution right now that can decarbonize the industry. And so we will be continuing to uh, emit uh, GHGs, greenhouse gas emissions, into the environment. And we know that those are what cause uh, climate change. Carbon neutrality is an ambition across so many industries. Looking ahead, how does aviation fit into a global emissions landscape that is greener every day? If you look at the, the world at large, aviation today is responsible for about 2% of global greenhouse gas emissions, but that number is going to increase as other sectors, for example, road, transportation, vehicles, start to decarbonize. And so our contribution to global warming is going to become uh, scrutinized more and more, and, and frankly, we, we need to lean into the solutions to accelerate a transition to cleaner, cleaner travel. 
When faced with a challenge as large-scale and consequential as climate change, setting ambitious goals can be daunting. We see companies and nations do it all the time. Japan is set to go carbon neutral. Carbon neutral by 2050. Europe, the world's first carbon neutral continent. And in aviation, like many industries, the path to carbon neutrality isn't exactly clear. Now the easy path would be to use carbon offsets, which basically cancel out greenhouse gas emissions somewhere else in the world through projects like wind or solar development. But United and others in the aviation industry are looking to solve this problem at its root. Just checked in, we got our tickets, but we're actually not going on a flight today. We're here at Denver International Airport to interview Matt Miller about United Airlines sustainability initiatives. Now there are some promising solutions, but also a few key technological advancements that are necessary to reach true carbon neutrality. By 2050, right, we want to reduce our carbon emissions by 100%. And that means doing things both at our entire company level with buying new aircraft, like this new fuel-efficient MAX aircraft behind me, uh, that really reduces uh, the amount of fuel that we're burning due to its efficient engines and the winglets. Then here in Denver, right, we're doing things on the ramp uh, to really try to reduce our emissions. We have the most number of electric and, and compressed natural gas ground service equipment, the tractors that run our bags and that push back the aircraft. We've made a commitment to do this not by using traditional carbon offsets. We need to make real structural changes in what we do. Sustainable aviation fuel, right? carbon sequestration, um, the things that United is doing and in investing in those technologies to get us there, that's how we're gonna achieve this. I can't think of a better place to, to lead that than here in Colorado, where every single person that lives in Colorado understands the impact of climate change. That was so cool. There's nothing quite like being on the ramp next to a 737. It's, you really get a sense just how big these planes are. There's a lot at stake for the environment, and it's going to take a lot of time and money to develop the technology needed to make it happen. There's no silver bullet, but there's silver buckshot. The challenge is that it will require a number of interventions from across the board. A few things quickly about sustainable aviation fuels are SAF. So the first thing to think about is that they are a drop-in fuel. That means they can get blended with existing aviation fuel supplies. They significantly can reduce the, the carbon emissions from air travel from a life cycle standpoint. And you can make SAF from many different feedstocks, such as forestry uh, residues, agricultural residues, municipal solid waste, uh, used cooking oils, algaes. So you have many potential solutions to use different renewable uh, raw material. Based on the life cycle assessment, we can assume that we can reduce up to 80% a CO2 emission per uh, each ton of uh, uh, kerosene fossil fuel substituted with SAF. The building blocks are starting to emerge, so sustainable aviation fuels will be needed. They're energy dense, they can be uh, sustainable with the right feedstocks. If you really look at oil companies, uh, which you know they, they provide 99.9% .9 of the fuel uh, for airlines, even though the airlines actually might really want to buy sustainable aviation fuels, it's hard to get the financing in place and the regulations in place to, to really grow a market. The, the challenge is, how can you do that direct air capture at scale, which is incredibly expensive and energy intensive today, and do that with a green source of electricity? How can you combine that with green hydrogen that's produced, again, with renewable electricity? Um, and then how can you combine those in a quite energy intensive process to create your hydrocarbons, again, with green energy? So if you can solve those challenges, then you can help to reduce the scale and the cost of SAF. Now, carbon capture technology is a little hard to explain, but you can kind of think about it like trees. They use gigantic fans to suck in air, separate the carbon from the oxygen, and sequester it safely away. Carbon capture technology is still a novel technology, there's still questions, will it work at scale and how effective will it be? United announced last year the intention to invest in a carbon capture uh, production plant that will be based in Texas. This plant uses what's called a direct air capture technology, which effectively means capturing CO2 from the atmosphere around all of us and sequestering that underground, um, which is really, really exciting. One of those plants alone will remove as much CO2 as 40 million trees. 
So in the context of scale and impact, it's huge. It's conversations like these that can really help us get there. Thanks for taking the time, Lauren. You have to have uh, an incredible uh, amount of coordination across the entire value chain to first establish the ambition um, and the vision that net zero is possible for aviation and it's possible by 2050. I am optimistic. I think, I think we've come a long way in the past 10 years. If the aviation sector can go in kind of high level, set its 2050 climate neutrality target, regulators will follow and they'll start to set policies like carbon pricing, like fuel standards, like efficiency standards. Uh, and then the manufacturers and the airlines will compete under those new set of rules for customers. Collective goals, concrete government policy, and then a, a race to the top where airlines do compete under those new standards. So we're wrapping up for the day here at Denver. If you guys subscribe to the channel, thank you so much. And if you made it this far, subscribe. All right, that's all for now. All right, so since this video has been all about the aviation industry, I did want to leave you guys with a couple practical tips you can use as consumers to fly more sustainably. When you fly, fly like a nerd, N-E-R-D. Uh, nerd stands for new aircraft, economy, regular sized aircraft. So not really small regional jets, not really super jumbo aircraft. And then D stands for direct. So if you follow kind of those four rules, uh, you can also significantly reduce emissions from flying.